Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all. I did not turn on the side lights so that you can appreciate that. Uh, so if one of you would like to go turn on those, that would be thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And all the little things to do today, we're here. Uh, both in, or all in uh, person, online, and out in the parking lot. You saw cars out there. If you listen closely, you might be able to hear some horns honking throughout. Uh, it's good to have you here with us in person, online, and in the parking lot. Uh, I want to remind you all that you can sign up on to join in person worship online or by calling Melissa in the office. You need to do so prior to Friday at 11.30. Melissa leaves at 11.30 on Friday, and uh, that will enable me to have some time off and not be worrying about who else is calling in on the weekend and allows us to have a good idea of who is uh, going to be in worship with us on Sunday morning. Uh, so our process is going to be not to let people in. I know we have space this morning, and that's okay because this is the first time that we're together and getting comfortable with things, and um, we celebrate that we're able to be back in person in safe ways and that uh, we do have space available. So if you're somebody that's whether or not you should be coming, uncomfortable, uncertain, uh, you can... Um, there are nine of us here, roughly 10, 12 of us here in total with uh, those who are supporting worship to make sure that we get all of the, the feeds going the way that they should. So we're appreciative of all of you joining us for worship in all of the ways that we're serving and worshiping together. Uh, we do remain committed to providing all three forms of worship, in person, online, and FM. They do require a little bit of training and technical support. So uh, if you are somebody who would be willing to serve the church in that capacity, um, talk to Bill and Angie. They should be able to hopefully give you a thumbs up that they didn't die through the service, that it, it, nothing horribly went wrong, that they got the training that they needed to, to fulfill the needs. If something glitches in the middle, breath with us because we're all learning how to do this through this, this the together uh, and it does require a, a lot of patience uh, from everybody so uh, just be attentive to that if you're worshiping with us in the parking lot you can bring your tithe to the box just outside of the church office on the wall and the flag is already up as I was out there I saw somebody who's already dropped their tithe or offering I will collect those and make sure they get to where they need to after worship uh, if you're here with us in person, please uh, know that the basket will be in the middle of the aisle so you can drop it in. We're not going to pass offering plates just to minimize touching of services and passing of germs that way. Um, yeah, and then if you're online, you can continue to mail in your offering or um, do online giving as well. All of those options are available for you. Um, so actually, Bill, can you mute the pulpit? Because I think I'm live right now. Um, and that, my mic, yeah. I think that's better. Yes, thank you. Uh, it helps, it echoes it a little bit more, I think, out for those in the, in the parking lot and online. So um, with no further ado, we are invited by God, and we gather to worship this beautiful Sunday fall morning. Partnering with God, we gather to grow in faith and to change the world. What a gift that we have been given, that we partner with God to do those things. In the words of the psalmist found in Psalm 106, hear these words. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for God's goodness. God's steadfast love endures forever. Happy are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Save us, O Lord, and gather us from among the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Come and worship. Our first song this morning that we will listen to in the sanctuary, again, reminder, no singing, uh, just to continue. Our, our germs and all those vapors and that's how the virus spreads and is known to spread is through those um, singing vapors so we're going to sit and listen to Melissa I know this is a hard one to do that for because we love this first song even in its contemporary format um, and you can remain seated in here as well as you receive that as a gift sing in your heart 
Those in the parking lot, of course, and online, you're welcome to sing uh, from wherever you are in your own homes safely. Melissa. <laughs>
analogy. Uh, and this morning, uh, you're not going to hear the scripture first in the next in the lineup. That's what we've been doing. But as we do this, as we prepare to enter into hearing the scripture, the first thing I want you to do is enter into a choose your own adventure story with me today, if you would. Um, and some of you may not know what that is, and that's okay. Here's what, here's what I'll give you. Um, got to also spit out my gum, so my apologies. Um, choose your own adventure story. When those, when I was a kid, that was something that became popular, and I guess, I'm not sure, I assume that they've been around longer than my lifetime, but I don't know that for a fact. I didn't go into the history of that, because that's really irrelevant. They, but the point is, you all are invited to enter into a choose-your-own-adventure story. And how this is going to go is, is that you get to choose which of the characters that you want to be this morning. And here we go. There are a couple of different characters. Would you like to be a part of the more prioritized individuals of society? Perhaps maybe religious leaders, business owners, or those who are living more than comfortably in their lives. That's group one that you can choose to be. And really the second group is just an average Joe Towns person. You got where you want to be. Do you want to be considered one of the elite? The, they're more than comfortable. You don't have to worry about where your money is going. You've got a business, maybe a lot of farmland to manage. Or you're just an average Joe working the daily grind and paying your bills, maybe lucky if you're making ends meet. You got what you want to do, what you want to be. Once you choose, here's the thing with these stories. I never really liked getting into them because once you choose, you have to stick with that storyline all the way through no matter what. Even if you don't like the result, stick it and ride it out. You got your, one, your group? Are you group one or group two? You know what you want in your head? All right. So, again, no take backs. So we'll move forward. The group of the prioritized, more well-to-do individuals receive a wedding invitation from a king. And they're invited to this wedding celebration in honor of the king's son. They ask around the community to see if they can find out who else is going, who else is among the prioritized individuals. And maybe they're not impressed with the list. And they decide that they have other things to do, and thus decide they're not going to the party. They're not going to this royal invitation that they have received. The king, in response to these murmuring, sends out his messengers to retrieve the invited guests. So there's people who come out to get you and bring you in, group one, and say, come on, the feast has been prepared, the table is ready, we're ready to have a good time. Why haven't you come? To which more excuses are, I'm going to get busy with the farm, or I've got things to do, or, 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 all of these sound like a seal. All of the different options. And at that moment, even some of those in group one decide that they're going to take ownership of those slaves. They're going to treat them poorly and eventually kill them. The king, in response to this, sends out his army who destroyed to go after those who destroyed his slaves, his servants, his messengers. And he tells his army to take care of them by burning their homes and their cities and killing them as well, ensuring that they no longer have life. I'm sorry, group one, you are no longer with us. Man, where's this in church fit in, right? Hmm, this is an interesting story, Pastor, I don't know. The messengers were sent out again because the first round that the king said and sent invitations to, he said, were not worthy of coming to the party, of, of attending to that party. So the messengers this time are sent out to everyone else they can find. That group number two, those of you who choose group number two, you've been formally invited to the wedding feast now. You're among the good and the bad, the happy and the sad, and everyone in between. It's a free 
meal, a wonderful community celebration, and you want to know what it's like inside the palace. You're excited. Excited that you get to be a part of this extravagant celebration. And so you arrive. You enter in, and as you enter, you get a set of clothes to wear. And you have a choice. Do you put on those clothes? Or do you choose not to wear them? What do you choose, friends? It might be a heavy, gaudy piece of clothing that you're asked to put on. And you don't really want to go through the discomfort of wearing it because it's going to be hot, maybe scratchy, ugh, or just heavy, ugh, goodness. And you decide that the practice of hospitality just isn't for you, and so you continue on your way to the party, figuring that you have already been invited to the celebration. Why must another requirement be placed upon you? Or, choice number two is to, maybe I'll put this on, maybe I'll never get a chance to wear anything like it ever again because it's beautiful and I'll fit in with everybody else and nobody will know who I am because it won't matter what I'm wearing in the moment. And sure, it might be a little uncomfortable at first, but it was given as a gift to be received and celebrated so that you can enter into the celebration and fully experience it. As all are intended to experience it. Did you make your decision? Are you wearing the clothing or not wearing the clothing? The king enters the hall after the festivities have begun and notices those who choose not, chose not to wear the garment. Because they stand out like a sore thumb amongst a crowd wearing the same thing. The garments that he provided as an act of hospitality and he chooses to draw his attention to those who chose not to wear the gown or the garments. And when you're asked why, those of you who cho chose not to put on the garment, you're speechless. And the guards come in and take you away to be thrown out of the party, never to return again. Our next song today is called Scars.
that robe that I even tucked aside because it's warm up here. <laughs> that robe we are asked to put on each and every day. That, that robe represents the clothes of Christ Jesus. Those clothes, these clothes, might be uncomfortable as they would have been to the guests at the party. Because on some level for all of us, donning the clothes of Christ daily means that we have to be willing to submit to ourselves, to some higher power than ourselves. We have to say yes to the transforming love and power of God, to be loved by God and love one another like God loves us. Colossians 3 reminds us what it is to be clothed in Christ. And the author of Colossians writes this, Colossians 3, verse 5, Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is also idolatry, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off your old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free. But Christ is all and all. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your heart, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. It's hard to do, because we can't do that physically right now among one another, but we can do that in our private homes. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Folks, it's not about who is at the party that matters as the scripture referenced, because all are invited. We all get the same invitation, whether we're in our seats here in the sanctuary, whether we're at home in our seats on the couch or wherever you're sitting at home, or if you're out in your car, or if you're somebody whose butt isn't in a church setting this morning. We all get the same invitation. All are invited and get the choice and multiple times to choose in some circumstances. I wonder how this story were to have, if it were to have shaken out if the unclothed people would have apologized, repented in that moment and said, I'm sorry, I just didn't think it was required, even though culturally it was expected. It's a sidebar for your, your historical reference that that was a tradition that you were given clothing as you came into one of those types of feasts. It would have been a social norm. I wonder if they would have repented in that moment, if how the story would have been different. Would they have been allowed to stay in the story, sort of like a prodigal son moment, because God is always waiting for us to come home to him? The truth of the matter is, is that we just don't know that part. But this is the parable that is told to illustrate the choices that we have in our lives, and that we get to choose to put on the clothes of Christ. It's a gift that's been given to 
us by being in relationship to God. And so what does all of this have to do with gratitude? For those who have been with us the last couple of weeks online and in all of the various forms that we've been worshiping in, I've been talking about gratitude and the enemies of gratitude. And we've talked a little bit about how nostalgia is the enemy. We've talked about um, how, you know, nostalgia and wanting, wanting to go back to the way things used to be and how comparison is a problem. With, with gratitude, because we're always wanting something more. This week's enemy of gratitude is entitlement. Entitlement says that if you are in the inner circle of something, that is, in, that is enough to give you power and prestige over the other people. And that gives you the right to do things that others may not. And maybe you do things to others that may not be nice because you think that you have the entitlement to do so, or you have the power and authority to do so. Our entitlement leads us to do things that are not Christ-like. Our culture is embedded with it. Our entitlement leads us to comparison and makes us feel like we are greater than others. Let's be honest, in God's kingdom, we are all the same. No one has any greater power, power or prestige than any other. We all get the same invitation to come to get to know Jesus and be in relationship with him and the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And oftentimes our entitlement leads us to thinking that we don't deserve, or that we do deserve more or better because another group has, may have something better than we do. Remember, comparison and nostalgia are also those thieves of gratitude. They take away joy inside of us. They take away our appreciation for being where we are in our lives. We have choices each day, or as we're talking about this, choose your own adventure story that lead to life and choices that lead to death that we make every day, day in and day out, multiple choices a day. Paul reminds us in Romans 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The choice is ours, and no one is forcing our hand in and they are truly, friends, daily choices. And we can undo those choices by confessing our sins and repenting and turning a new corner within a day. That's the God that we worship, the God that we adore when we gather, when we enter into relationship, when we ask for forgiveness, we receive it. That's that gift of grace. Just because we do get that same invitation to go to the party, to be in relationship with Jesus Christ, doesn't mean the red carpet is rolled out for us once we show up. Once we have been baptized. Once we have joined a church or picked a church to attend. It's not simply enough to claim any of those things. It doesn't give us any rights or power or prestige over anyone else. Sitting on a church committee doesn't either. It's not enough for our salvation. Our salvation is our own personal work that we say yes to each and every day. John Wesley called all of that the means of grace. We experience God's grace when we enter into all of those works and putting on the clothes of Christ. We talk about the means of grace before, both in practice of experiencing the sacraments as well as our personal, private, and corporate worship life. Our prayer, our study, our acts of service in the name of Jesus Christ. Daily choices, multiple choices a day. Not a multiple choice test, but multiple opportunities to choose. That is that which is Christ Jesus.
scripture reminds us that it isn't enough just to say yes God to God once, but we must show up to the party after accepting the invitation and putting on those clothes of Christ. Daily choice. The descriptors listed in Colossians are not easy to give up or to put on. It means that we have to die to ourselves and let go of our own selfish ambitions, our own pride, so that we can be transformed by the God who created us and enter into true, authentic relationship with Him. And when we do that, they're so well hard at first, especially. They're so rewarding. And the coat doesn't feel as awkward and heavy eventually. Don't get me wrong, I'm still personally burning up right up here this morning. But, but, it does get easier. It becomes a part of who you are and who, because it's who God intended you to be. To be in relationship, to be transformed by the work of the Holy Spirit, by being in relationship and choosing the best right in the moment. Those descriptors are rewarding and help us to live into a life of joy and gratitude for things that God blesses us with. When we are able to dress for the party, we're able to put on the clothes for ourselves and for those that surround us. And what I mean by that is that when by us taking on these clothing, this clothing, the, clo the clothes of Christ, we're able to be more patient with others, more grace-filled with others, more loving, more humble in our conversations. Church, that is what the world needs right now. We don't need more division. We don't need to cite the references to that, folks. We can look around the world all over the place right now and see divisions. And perhaps even divisions among us. When we show up and are able to dress for the party, we are able to put on those clothes for ourselves and for one another, and are able to be more hospitable to one another as a result. When we are fully able to participate in donning on our Christ-like apparel, and I hear the Christmas carol in my head as I wrote that, and as I say it now, we must don our Christ-like apparel, just like we would our, our Christmas apparel, right? With joyful anticipation of what is to come. When we are able to do that, we're able to fully live into the life of gratitude and joy because we have experienced life in a new way. We know that life gets better. We know that life is better with God, with us, partnering with God. That's the way God intended us to live and experience the party that is eternal life. That's what we strive for. And may we do so. May we put on the apparel each day, that heavy robe, wear the mantle, and carry it with us everywhere we go. Amen. This morning, I don't have a formal list again. Of, and we're entering into this time of not being able to share those prayer requests openly like we would on Sunday morning. And so if you would like me to share a prayer request, I need you to let me know ahead of time, before Sunday morning, or before worship on Sunday morning. Um, it's even better if it's before Sunday, because Sunday mornings are chaotic enough, and I forget things like the cross and the, and the, and the, flood, the, the candles as well. There's a lot of details on Sunday mornings these days. So... Things I want to raise to you that are going on in our community, that have gone on in our community. Um, this week we lost a young person in our community, not from our congregation, but definitely impacts several in our congregation. This is also, I will say, um, Mental Health Awareness Week, month actually. Yesterday was the day that we celebrated theoretically and we don't speak enough to it, but we should. As a church, we need to be aware that there are people that are hurting in this world in this time of division, in this time of separation, socially from one another. It has gotten increasingly hard for people who struggle with mental health challenges. 
And my call to you in this moment by sharing that is to think about people that you haven't seen or talked to. I'm going to give you a challenge of three. Three seems to be the good triune number to stick with. Think of three people that you can reach out to this week. Give yourself time to show up to them, to ask questions of how they are doing. Let them be them. Don't worry about responding. Just show up. Reach out to them. If you haven't seen them, give them the love and compassion of Christ. Think about people that you haven't seen especially, or maybe people who are at home by themselves. It's the second time that a death of a young person has impacted me personally in some way, shape, or form in the last three weeks. And so it's become irrelevant on so many ways. And it's not just young people, it's people of all ages wrestle with this. It's important that we do our best to reach out to those that surround us and create space for them authentically to be themselves. Uh, the other, so hold our community, hold our young people, all of that said, in prayer. Uh, several young people in our congregation, young adults, have been impacted by this loss in the last week. Um, and they too need your prayer and support and love. God knows all of the details of the situation, so we don't need to continue to share them. But we, we know that we can lift our young people and all of those that surround the family this week as they celebrate this young man's life. Um, also, I want to share, um, several have emailed me and sent me the links. Mary Ellen Bartlett passed away uh, last Monday or Sunday. I've lost track of the day at this point. Uh, she had been worshiping with us uh, for about a year and a half now, I believe, uh, following the closure of the church that she claimed as her true home at Dice Wesley. And so hold her and those in the community that surround her. She's well known in our community for her musical talents. Right, Ruth? Um, affirmed that and um, was just a wonderful lady that I know if you knew her, it, uh, you were impacted by her. So uh, they celebrated her life yesterday, Friday, Friday. Um, so hold her family in prayer as they navigate uh, the grief and loss of Mary Ellen. Um, and let us turn now to God for a word of prayer. Almighty God, you never abandon your children. Your steadfast love endures forever. Your faithfulness throughout the generations. We pray for those in our world whose trust has been broken through exploitation by people in power or abuse by those in intimate circles. We pray for those whose trust has been broken through abandonment by those who promise to stay, or manipulation by those who refuse to let go. We pray for those whose trust has been broken through cold comfort in times of affliction or callous rebukes of those on the margins. We pray for those whose trust has been broken through the trauma of war for the chaos of assault. Empower us, your body, your hands and feet, to enfold and protect those broken in body, mind, or spirit through your all-embracing grace. Lord, we pray these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Church, come with thanksgiving, always and everywhere, to offer your gifts 
and honor God through those gifts, those gifts of time, talent, and treasure. Again, a reminder that you can give electronically. You can find that information on our website by going out to freelandumc.org and clicking the Give button. Uh, you can download the Give Plus app on your phone if you're somebody who is techie. If not, you can mail your check-in. You can drop it by the box outside of the office that is a lockbox. It's safe and secure in there, and Melissa and I have access to get that and get it where it needs to go. <laughs> Or if you're here in person, you can, you're can you welcome to drop your gift in the basket in the center aisle when you come in or when you leave. For all of those gifts we receive today and in the week ahead, we pray, oh God. Gracious God, thank you for your abundant love and your nourishing grace. Thank you for the gifts that we return to you today and in the week ahead. Bless these gifts, O oh God, that they might become for others signs of your abundant love and vessels of your nourishing grace. It's in your Son, Jesus Christ's name, that we pray. Amen. Our final song today is Counting Every Blessing.
peace of God which surpasses all understanding be with you and guard your hearts and our minds as we go forth from this place today. Amen. Again, for those of you who are in here, if you dismiss from back to front and then go on out into the parking lot to carry your fellowship on out there. If you are in the parking lot with us yet, you're welcome to stand around and visit with folks, but out in the parking lot, please. Thank you so much. We'll see you again.